When I was 16 years old, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. I went through a period of some uh, of being affected by the disease to some degree and really started thinking about why. So I guess I've been somewhat stuck thinking like a two or a three year old constantly asking why things happen and for me science was really a great way to try to understand disease processes and understand what really underlies when biology goes wrong. Diseases of the musculoskeletal system are one of the most common and costly problems in Canada. Back pain is the top ranking amongst all of them. So the need to better understand the biology of the intervertebral disc and what processes go wrong that cause these common diseases are quite important. My lab is currently working on a variety of different aspects that all relate to how intervertebral discs function and how they develop. And so the first thing that our lab did was develop a mouse model to trace the developmental lineage that contributes to the intervertebral disc and we're able to establish its origins. Uh, for us, this is really intriguing. The disc is a rather uh, different model system than you would think of when you think of arthritis and knee because very little of its underlying biology is known. In addition to understanding development, we have a few disease models that we study in the lab. We have, by looking one gene at a time, we've developed a new model of disc degeneration. We have one mouse that particularly models a complex disease called diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, or DISH, which is the second most common form of arthritis. And we also study a rare cancer called chordoma. Research in our lab for the first time developed a notochord or intervertebral disc specific Cree mouse. And this is a really valuable tool to study genetics and cell biology. It enables us to remove or add one gene at a time just in our cell type of interest and really understand what factors are important directing intervertebral disc or spine development as well as spine disease. So for the field this was really a new resource that now has opened the door to a variety of ongoing research projects. In the big picture, what we'd like to do is use the mouse models that we have in the lab to really transition into human diseases and perhaps develop new avenues to treat very, very common pathologies that affect the intervertebral disc.